Hello Year 12 Film Study students. This is a video to walk you through your global film essay looking at the cinematography and mise-en-scene of Ida and City of God. We're really going to focus on how to make sure you get in as many features of film form, comment on the spectator responses as well as the contextual issues that surround both these films. It's really important that you pay close attention to detail and really meticulously and carefully go through each possible feature of film form. As long as you do that, you'll be able to explore a wide range of spectator responses and then you'll be able to add in little touches of context as you go along. This will mean that you explore the widest possible range of meaning and therefore your essays end up being as well developed as possible. In terms of the course as a whole, this is part of your paper too, and it only assesses the core study areas, which is why in this essay we'll just be looking at the features of film form, spectator response, and context. So we've got our title, we know we're talking about mise-en-scene and cinematography, um, and we are only allowed to talk about those two features of film form. We're not allowed to go anywhere else, we don't get any extra credit for doing so. We just have to focus very precisely and relentlessly on those two things. What you can see is a screen recording of me producing this model essay, so you can see it in all of its messy glory as we go along. So I will make changes and tweaks, and I'll probably spot problems as I go along. And indeed, looking back at it now, I may even spot problems um, that I didn't edit out at the time. So the first starting point is a short introduction, a couple of sentences, and I really do mean a couple of sentences. It should just be commenting on the two films and the overall effects of your features of film form. And as we go through this, I'll read the essay to you um, and I'll comment on the sorts of things that I'm doing that will bring you success if you were to mimic them. Um, and I will also then go back through, show you some key phrases that you can use, and I can will also show you some of the uh, the step-by-step -step processes that I've thought about in my head. So in essence, we're going to go through this essay three times. So in Idea and City of God, the directors use cinematography and mise-en-scene to reinforce the damage and harm that their characters experience, as well as stressing some of the core contextual ideas at the centre of both narratives. So I'm just saying here that I'm going to really just be looking at a couple of key ideas. I can go further than that if I want to in the essay, but that gives me a nice starting point. But I've also just commented on the fact that I'm showing the examiner that I am going to comment on key contextual issues as well. Then I go straight uh, through and into my first paragraph. So firstly, in Ida, underlining the titles of the films, the point at which Ida and Wanda travel to the forest employs particularly haunting cinematography and mise-en-scene. So I'm saying what I'm going to talk about straight away, and I'm naming my focus sequence immediately. I then go straight to my first feature of film form. There's no fluff, there's no waffle. We go straight to the features of film form because this is being assessed for the core study areas. So the extreme long shot of the characters walking across an empty field and towards the dark, imposing and shadow, shadowy forest instills a sense of intense foreboding amongst spectators. So I've connected my feature of film form to spectator response. Whilst, furthermore, handy little phrase, suggesting that they are heading towards their past and discovering their previous histories. So I'm always looking to add additional spectator responses as I'm going along. So I go on and say, suggesting that they are heading towards their past and discovering their previous histories, which had been torn away from them as a result of the horrors of the Holocaust. So I've got my first little contextual reference tucked in there, really clear. I'm showing that I'm prepared to comment on all three of the core study areas, and I've done that in my opening couple of sentences. Then I add a little bit more to this one first shot, showing that I'm being as meticulous as I possibly, possibly can. Additionally, this shot makes them appear tiny, as though the figures are small and insignificant, making them seem overwhelmed by the scale of the history they are facing. So again, I'm just going through this as meticulously as I can, as carefully as I can, so that I'm showing that I can tease out a range of different spectator responses from specifically selected features of film form. So, as I kind of continue on with this essay, and you'll see me pause at moments, check things, um, and make little tweaks and changes. Um, my next sentence sets up my next piece of analysis, so I'm moving on to my next shot, 
but still from the same part of the film. So I'm not jumping like crazy all over the film. I'm focusing on a five or six minute section of the film and I'm going from one section to another very clearly and very sequentially. It's one thing then another. I'm not jumping around. Once they enter the forest and the exhumation is complete, the digger is framed at the centre of a high angle medium shot. So I'm saying what I'm commenting on and then I'm saying my feature of film form straight away. So I've made a statement, I'm putting a colon, I'm then going to explain that statement. This makes him seem weak and almost pathetic, as though he is suddenly suffering for his part in harming Ida and Wanda's family. This, equally, for the first time, places Ida in a low angle, positioning her as having somewhat more moral authority. So I'm dealing with my first uh, feature of film form, I'm dealing with the high angle, making the digger seem small and pathetic, then I'm moving to a shot that's cut away to, that Ida is then placed in a low angle. Um, but I'm doing it one at a time. One shot, one feature of film form at a time. Equally, the way in which the sides of the grave fill the rest of the shot, so here I'm commenting on mise-en-scene, I don't need to use the phrase mise-en-scene to prove it though. Equally, the way in which the sides of the grave fill the rest of the shot make it appear as though he has been completely consumed by the grave, as though he too has been consumed by his guilt. So that's my first really proper comment on mise-en-scene after my initial briefer one where I comment on the trees and the empty field. Um, so that has meant that I can just now continue to move through this essay, but I know I've covered off now mise-en-scene and cinematography. And I am thinking about these things as I'm going along. I am thinking, right, I know I've got this question, I know I've got to cover both parts of the question, and I've got to do it really thoroughly. So, I'm adding another spectator response next. In this way, Pavlikowski makes him appear to be ready to be buried, such is the trauma that he experiences as a result of exposing this secret. So I'm just now commenting on what the director is trying to achieve, or what I think the director is trying to achieve. Indeed, this plays into some of the negative critical responses. The, sorry, indeed, this plays into some of the negative critical reception this film received on release. So this is a really handy bit of context. You've had articles about this, so you should go back to your notes from homework and preparatory study. Many Polish commentators strongly rejected the film's narrative, claiming it was unrepresentative. Whereas, perhaps, or we perhaps, receive this film at this moment in particular as a, and I think I'm going to say a visual metaphor, so I'm commenting on the fact that this is a symbolic film. And Pawlikowski says this himself. He makes a big play about the fact that this isn't literal history being played out in front of us. This is a, this is a set of visual images that explore a range of meaning. Um, and he was very clear about this, whereas big chunks of the Polish critical reception seem to take this film as though Pawlikowski was commenting on history itself. Um, and this moment in particular as a visual metaphor for the way in which the past, when it resurfaces, particular past and history is terrifying as the Holocaust, and I've just dropped in there, after the word particularly, in between two commas, a little bit of context, is damaging and destructive, but also must be faced and exposed. So here's me dealing with context. You'll see I haven't dealt with features of film form for a little while, and it's a bit risky and I clock that next as I'm thinking about this and I'm typing my way through it. I realise I've been going on about context, I haven't really been commenting on mise-en-scene and cin cinematography for too many words now. So this is me doing that and I do that by making a connection across the film. Pawlikowski places this in total contrast to the scenes where jazz music is at the forefront of the films. And I'm still not talking about cinematography mise-en-scene and I've clocked that again. Rather than skulls as props, which happen in the sequence we've looked at at the start of the paragraph, musical instruments. So here I'm talking about a prop. That's part of mise-en-scene, that's okay. I'm now back on track again. Musical instruments seem to suggest liberty and freedom, in much the, way, in much the same way as the arrival of jazz signalled the end of the restrictions of the Soviet period of history. So I'm bringing in my comment on props, I'm talking about mise-en-scene, I don't need to use the phrase mise-en-scene, 
uh, and I am also aligning that with the context. So in much the same way as is a nice phrase you can use to do that. And I'm now fully back on track again, having had a bit of a contextual waffle earlier. Moreover, in the background of the mise-en-scene, there are many bright lights. Uh, there are many small bright lights. I put that a little adjustment in there. I comment on the fact that sometimes in, they're in focus and sometimes they're out of focus. So sometimes you see the lights and sometimes they're just little balls of light in the background. And I go on and I say that they're projecting a hopeful, positive quality in these scenes. So I'm really striving to make a point about the contrast between this moment of the film and later parts of the film. And what you should be seeing here is even though I've had a brief moment where I've come away from talking about the features of film form, I come back to it. And when I come back to it, I make sure I comment on it really specifically. Uh, you'll have already heard me say not to use the phrase mise-en-scene again and again, um, but I do in this case because I'm talking about the background as a whole rather than a specific object within it. So I'm talking about the background as a whole and I'm picking out the bright small lights. Then I make a further connection. Um, so later in Ida, Ida, who we learn is called Anna, rejects her nun's attire for a dress, changing her identity and replacing it with a new liberated persona, which, whilst only a brief rebellion, so you can see I'm now picking on another element of mise-en-scene. So I'm going through my feature sheet the, the, in each box on that feature sheet and I'm thinking about the different things that I can comment on in the film as a whole and in particular sequences. So I've commented on the background, I've commented on the props, I've commented on the trees. And you can see I've just finished that paragraph off now. So I fin <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I finished that off by saying later in Ida, who we learn is called Anna, rejects her nun's attire for a dress, changing her identity, replacing it with a new liberated persona, which, whilst only a brief rebellion, runs in parallel to the desire for freedom and liberty that Pavlikowski keeps returning to. So, our next paragraph, I'm moving on to City of God. There is no requirement for comparison between these two sections. There's no comparison for no requirement for comparison between these two films. You get no marks for it, there's no point you integrating them, there's no point you squishing and squashing them together. They need to be dealt with separately. I can't stress that to you strongly enough. If the exam board wanted you to do that, they'd have put it in a specification, told me to teach you that. You deal with one film at a time. So, um, you can see here, uh, I've started off with this first sentence. In City of God, the cinematography and mise-en-scene are used to comment on the power disparities, which just means gaps and poverty that dominate life in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro. So I've put context first here. I've put the fact that there are these big gaps between different levels of power in the favela. Um, and then I start moving through. So I move on and I name my focus sequence. So I just say this is particularly clear when little Z confronts the, confronts the runs. When he appears, and there should be a comma there, he is shot in a low angle, close up, making him dominate the frame. So I'm going straight to my feature of film form. I'm doing all of this very quickly and as precisely as I can. So when he appears, he is shot in a low angle, close up, making him dominate the frame and exaggerating the sense of power that surrounds him. In contrast, so I deal with one feature of film form first, then I use a comparative connective in contrast. The runs, the runs are suddenly shot in low angle reminding us that they are powerless children. So I am making connections between features of film form, but I'm not trying to deal with two or three things at once. I'm dealing through each feature of film form one at a time as precisely as I can. Reminding us that they are powerless children in the face of Lil Z's threat. Moreover, the handheld camera that runs throughout the film, and again, I'm just dropping this in here because it's appropriate to reference it here. So I'm talking about a feature of film form that appears in this sequence, but I am making a connection and placing that feature of film form in the context of the film as a whole. So moreover, the handheld camera that runs throughout the film maintains the unstable and chaotic impression in this scene, making Little Z's responses seem even more unstable and threatening. 
So I'm talking about something that happens all the way through the film, but I'm also, and more importantly, commenting on the impact that it's having in that particular moment of the film. So having dealt with cinematography, I've dealt with the angle, I've dealt with a close-up, uh, I've dealt with composition because I talk about little z dom dominating the frame. I'm really being quite meticulous and quite thorough in how I'm going through each possible element of cinematography. So now I move on to mise-en-scene. And again, you'll notice I'm not saying mise-en-scene because I'm saying the setting. So the setting also sees the runts enclosed and backed into a corner, leaving them unable to escape, also serving to highlight the way in which power is abused in the favela. And just using the word favela means that you are commenting on context. These are not slums, they're called favelas, and you should refer to them as such. And I add in a little bit more context now, because I feel satisfied that I've commented on a few elements of cinematography and dealt with each element of cinema cinematography one at a time. And then I've dealt with mise-en-scene, so now I'm bringing this in, this context in. Likewise, these runts and orphans making them open to abuse and manipulation shows, apologies for the error, shows the fragile and lawless state of these favelas. So I've made a statement there, it's a contextually focused statement, but now I'm going to move on and I turn back to mise-en-scene again after the colon. When the gun is turned on the child, the close-up on the gun and the face show the distress such violence causes. So I'm now commenting on a prop again, which is again a valid part of mise-en-scene and part of all of the little parts of mise-en-scene that you can comment on. And it's really important that you move through each thing one at a time. And I know I've said that a few times, but some students can try and deal with five or six things at once and get themselves in a bit of a tangle. And what we need to be doing is dealing with things one at a time. Uh, making them open to abuse and manipulation, showing the fragile and lawless state of these favelas. When the gun is turned on the child, the close-up on the gun and the face show the distress such violence causes, but that, equally, power resides in those with the weapons to enforce control. However, Morellas is keen to stress that, despite power, the chaotic nature of the favelas threaten everyone. So I'm dealing there with spectator response. I'm moving to a different section of the film as well. Um, so I just want to say that yes, power is really important in this film, power is often abused in this film, but equally when we move to different parts of the film we see that, that those relationships between powerful individuals is not always that stable either. And you'll notice that I'm making statements and putting colons, so I'm making a statement and I'm going on to explain it. So Benny's death is particularly shocking to the spectator, so there's my next sequence, and changes the film causing even greater chaos. And you can see I've been editing and fiddling around with this. You can see that I just wasn't quite happy with the phrasing. Um, and I'm now thinking, right, what am I going to put in next? What's the next thing that I should add in? And I catch myself using the word edited, and I know I shouldn't be doing that, so I quickly put in close-ups, and it's the close-ups I'm commenting on because that's what I'm allowed to comment on. So there are many rapidly edited together close-ups as little Z takes the gun prop, mise-en-scene, and mistakenly shoots his friend. So a little moment of coming off tack, off the question, which is just for cinematography mise-en-scene, but I get myself back on track really quickly. In this way, we as spectators, so now I'm explicitly commenting on spectator response, one of the core study areas that you need to make sure you comment on. In this way, we as spectators are encouraged to recognise that this violence is indiscriminate. It can harm anyone. And then I think I can add another point, so I put a semicolon and, co and carry on with a connected idea. Moreover, that this happens at the club, so mise-en-scene, the place, the setting. So moreover, that this happens at the club, which had been a, which had been a safer space at the point Benny hoped to leave the slum. And I'm thinking now, right, I've made that connection, I'm about to make a, I'm about to comment on spectator response which had been a safer space at which, at which, at the point Benny hoped to leave the slum, demonstrates the way in which violence infects all spaces and parts of the favela. So I'm therefore, I'm coming to the end of my paragraph now, I'm happy with where I'm up to, um, and I'm happy that I've covered each element and each part of the question quite thoroughly.
and I'm just adding a little bit more because I've just thought actually there's a little bit more that I can add. There's one more idea, one more feature of film form I could tease out at this moment. And again, I'm doing this because I'm trying to be as meticulous and as thorough as I can possibly be. The way in which we see Benny cradled on the floor in a long shot with empty space all around him helps to reinforce the sense of shock and horror. So feature film form, the long shot, spectator response, the shock and horror. But I go on and I place that in the context of the rest of the film. So where else do we see those sorts of ideas coming up? Helps to reinforce the sense of shock and horror of this moment, but also is an exception as otherwise the mise-en-scene of the film is claustrophobic and enclosed. So I'm happy with my essay, I'm happy with what I've done so far, so I'm just going to show you some of the phrases that you could borrow and steal, and I do expect to see these phrases turn up, particularly where I've highlighted in your previous essays that you're waffling a bit, or that you're not being precise, or that you're not structuring your ideas. So in Ida and City of God, the directors use, as well as stressing, so I'm using these phrases to be very particular about the meanings I'm stating. Firstly, in either the point at which, and then you can put your, um, your, your sequence in, the point at which a character does this, that, and the other, the insert your uh, feature film form, and you can say instills a sense of, so that allows you to comment on spectator response, whilst furthermore suggesting lets you add an extra idea. Additionally, this shot, makes them seem as though, um, and again then I've got another reference, once they enter the forest, once a character does this, once a character does this, uh, they're framed at the centre, so again we introduce the moment and then the feature, this makes him seem, is a phrase I use again and again, uh, this equally for the first time, so I'm highlighting when something happens for the first time, talking about how someone's positioned, so positioning her as having some more moral authority, uh, equally, the way in which the side sides of the grave fill. Um, in this way, Pavlikowski makes him appear to be. So in this way, the director's name makes the character appear to be. Uh, and then a phrase to bring in some context. Indeed, this plays to some of the... Um, and bringing that in. And then I put in some spectator response, whereas instead we perhaps receive this film this moment in particular as something else entirely. So I'm stating the context, I'm bringing in more spectator response. Pavlikowski places this in total contrast to, so I've got an opposite idea there. Um, in the same way as, so I'm using that to make a connection across the film. We have that phrase later in Ida, so that connection across the film, which whilst runs in parallel to, so those little phrases let me make connections between ideas. In City of God, the cinematography of mise en used to comment on that phrase is handy. This is particularly clear when, and then when he appears, he is shot in A, and then you put your feature in. So you can see I'm being very particular with my phrasing. Now, if you use the models consistently, you'll find that these are phrases that I use all the time, and I encourage you to use all the time. So this setting also sees the, also serving to highlight the, likewise showing the, Again, that, the setting also sees that that's how you get your mise-en-scene in without saying mise-en-scene. Also serving to highlight lets you bring in an extra idea. So you can have the best subject knowledge in the world, but it's these little phrases that let you get that idea and those ideas and that thinking across. It's why I'm insisting that you really need to use these phrases. Once you use them and you bring them into your own style of essay writing, you'll find that they become a more natural part of what you want to do, what you want to write. I put that, drop in that phrase to the spectator, so I make that really clear that I'm talking about spectator response. I say, and again in this one I've just highlighted, in this way we as spectators are encouraged to, and then the way in which we see a character, and then the location in a particular shot. So what I'm just going to bring through now is just the step by step. So we've gone through the essay, we've written the essay together. Uh, now I've shown you some of the language that you can use to particularly highlight some key ideas. And now I'm just going to take you through step by step what to do. So quick introduction, um, and it's a quick statement of the general and overall effects. And that's all you're doing in the introduction. It's a sentence.
it's, this should not take you very long, but it is a good place for you to just pop a couple of your first ideas. First sentence of my first paragraph, I'm naming my sequence immediately. I'm not messing around, I'm not wasting any time, I'm getting that name straight away. I move on and I make my uh, feature film form very clear. So here I am with cinematography, um, but I've also dropped in the empty field and the dark imposing shadowy forest and I'm bringing in my spectator response immediately. I have another sentence, I add another spectator response, another meaning and effect, another, another idea that's been created through those features of film form. I'm then making a connection to the next little bit I want to comment on. So I'm moving on to another section, another section of the film that I'd like to comment on and write about. And then the next spectator response. So, and again, it's that impact in the spectator response and I keep coming back to it. What's this doing to the spectator? What's this making us think? What's this making us see? How's this making us respond? This is the ideas that I keep coming back to again and again and again. So now I'm introducing mise-en-scene. So I'm really here making sure I'm hitting both parts of the question. So I've dealt with some cinematography precisely, meticulously, and in detail, step by step. Now I'm bringing in my mise-en-scene. And I then comment on, again, the spectator response, the effect that Pawlikowski is producing and creating. In this next section, I'm bringing my context in. So I'm using the context that I've researched, commented on, and I'm making a connection to the film itself. So I'm trying to relate the context to the comments I'm making in the essay. Now I make a connection across the film, but I'm keeping that connection focused quite closely on the features of film form I wish to talk about. I'm really making sure I'm trying to do that as much as I can. My next element of mise-en-scene, the bright lights that are that are posited round in the background. I think some of you may say that sir, lighting is part of uh, cinematography, which is true, um, but these lights are part of the props, part of the setting, which is why I classify it as part of mise-en-scene. And then I make a comment on the mise-en-scene again. So I'm talking about costume here, and I'm just making a note, writing it in front of you, is that you don't, you need to remember that costume is part of mise-en-scene, and it's in, an important part of mise-en-scene as well. It's commented on really clearly, really obviously and you've got to comment on it. And it's a handy thing to have in your back pocket to comment on the costume and props if you've got a, an essay where you, for the global film where you're allowed to talk about mise-en-scene. That's how you get the detail in, it's how you get the breadth of ideas in. So we bring in City of God, bringing that in as our second film. Um, and I know you haven't studied City of God for a few weeks at this point when you're viewing this when it's first published, um, but by the same token, this is producing your essays is a really good way of revising your subject content. So we comment on what the cinematography and mise-en-scene are doing overall and then we quickly introduce a specific sequence and again I do that very concisely, very quickly. We don't say in the intimidation scene or in the shooting scene, we say this is clear when this character does this, or when this character behaves in this way. Um, we then bring our feature film, on, film form in straight away. Here, I've moved to a second feature of film form, is what I'm commenting on right now. I've moved to a second feature of film form, and I'm immediately commenting on the spectator response that's been generated at that particular moment. I add a third feature of film form, but this one, because it's used all the way across the film, I comment on that fact as well. But I'm not commenting on the film as a whole, I'm keeping my commentary on this particular moment of the film, this particular focus sequence. So I bring on um, another comment on mise-en-scene, again talking about the setting, um, and I comment again on the, on the uh, spectator response that's been produced. So there is this constant connection between feature film form, spectator response, feature film form and the spectator response it produces. And once I've done that loop two or three times, then I can bring in some context. So I mention the context, I mention how being an orphan makes them vulnerable to being taken advantage of, and here we get then this sense that uh, we're connecting the design of the film to the context that's being represented. And we comment on again, spectator response, so what Morellas is stressing to us as a whole, 
and then we bring in our next sequence. So we talk about the moment when Benny is killed, because we've talked about the runts being vulnerable, and now we're talking about one of the powerful gangsters being vulnerable as well. My next feature of film form, the close-ups, and then the spectator response. That pattern is repeated again and again and again. And it's fine to repeat that pattern because you're going to look at different features of film form. And the more different features of film form you can cover, the wider range of meaning that you're going to be able to develop in this essay. And ultimately, that's how you're going to be as successful as you possibly can be. Lots of features of film form and different meanings from each feature of film form. OK, so now we've been through how to produce that essay meticulously and step by step. You should be able to see that this is a question of going through each feature of film form in turn and making a very close, precise connection to spectator response, whilst from time to time, when relevant, dropping in your contextual knowledge for both of these films. It's really important that you go through your features of film form meticulously and you use the features of film form sheet that you've had from the start of the course, almost ticking off as many of those features of film form as you can. You should cover a wide range of sequences in your essays, going beyond what's been modelled to you, uh, and that should then allow you to cover and come up with a really broad and diverse range of meanings and ideas. I'm looking forward to seeing what you can produce with these essays and responses. I'm looking forward to seeing the ways in which that your essays can become more precise. Uh, and that will then allow us to explore and debate an even wider range of meaning as you continue to move through the course.